Now, the inventory turnover ratio is a common financial ratio that's used particularly in the retail sector uh, because it measures how many times a firm is able to sell through its existing inventory. Now, inventory turnover is actually a type of what we call activity ratio. And an activity ratio is a general category in which an inventory turnover actually falls under. So there's a number of different activity ratios. But a general activity ratio is all designed to measure how well a company is able to take uh, things like assets, so things that it owns that provide value, and able to ultimately turn those into cash or sales revenue. So we're taking a look at things that the company owns that has some type of value, and we're trying to determine how effective or successful the firm is at utilizing those assets and generating sales revenue, which of course we look commonly at inventory, particularly for a retail type firm. So let's dive into the inventory turnover ratio. Um, First off, let's kind of go into how do you calculate inventory turnover? Well, inventory turnover, you need two variables. The first thing you need is costs of goods sold. Uh, Instead of costs of goods sold, you might see costs of goods manufactured, costs of uh, goods produced. Uh, There's a number of different terms you can use. Costs of goods sold is the common uh, line item that you'll see on the balance sheet for this particular, I'm sorry, not on the balance sheet, but rather on the income statement for this particular uh, variable here. So we need this one first. And of course, it's going to be on the income statement right below revenues because these include all of the different costs associated with actually generating those sales revenues. Now, we're going to divide this figure and we're actually going to divide it by average inventory. And average, of course, being an average of two different numbers. Now, For this particular, you know, inventory, of course, we're going to get on the balance sheet, and that's an asset. But the problem is we're not going to get average inventory. If you recall back from several videos, we talked about the balance sheet and how it's a snapshot of a firm's uh, position at a specific point in time. So we can't get the average inventory looking at the inventory on a specific date. So what you're going to need is you're going to need two numbers for inventory. And so you can usually get a beginning and an ending inventory. So let's say, for example, you're trying to calculate inventory turnover for a given year. Well, what you can do is take the beginning inventory at the beginning of the year uh, and then take the ending inventory or the beginning inventory for the next period and then add those numbers together, divide them by two, and you'll get average inventory. So let's walk through a quick example so we can get a a value and we can talk about the meaningfulness of that value. So let's say that we have a cost of goods sold of $350,000. So that is the value of the cost of goods that we, of course, use to generate profit or sales revenue first. And we're going to divide that by our average inventory. And let's say that we determine our average inventory to be $125,000. Well, That means that we have an inventory turnover ratio of 2.8. Now, contrary to other variables where we get a percentage of some kind, inventory turnover is not a percentage. Um, So this is a multiple. So we have 2.8. And what this means is that we actually, in a given accounting period, so whatever period that we're using, let's say it's for the year, uh, we have sold through our inventory 2.8 times. So the value of our inventory, we've sold that through almost three times in a given year. So the question is, well, is this a relatively strong inventory turnover ratio? Um, Helpful, again, you want to compare it to past periods. You want to do a comparison between other firms in the industry. You want to be cautious of two things, uh, one of which is obvious and the other one might not be so obvious. Uh, So one is when you have a relatively high inventory turnover ratio. And the conventional wisdom would be that, you know, if you have an inventory ratio that is 10, 15, 20, that sounds really, really good. Obviously, a company, if you're selling through your inventory relatively quickly or faster than usual, you're going to generate more sales revenue, which is going to translate into greater profitability. But the thing that you need to think about is, well, what conditions exist that would cause you to sell through your inventory at a rate of 15x or 20x? And you have to look at two variables, uh, one of which is we are having stock outs, 
which means that we simply don't have enough inventory available. Um, so we, we don't have enough of the things that people really like. Uh, and as a result, we're, we're missing opportunities. And so people are coming into our stores and because we don't have enough inventory, they're being, uh, the, the things are flying off the shelves, but we're missing sales. We have lost opportunities and people are going to other companies most likely to be able to find the products that they want to purchase. So. Uh, inventory turnover ratio that is too high can actually reveal that we're we're mismanaging our inventory, that we are not acquiring enough of it, um, and that could be problematic. The other thing it could reveal besides stockouts is it could actually indicate that our prices are too low. Again, if we are selling through inventory at a very, very quick pace, we may have an opportunity to actually increase the sales price, which logically would decrease demand for that product. However, sometimes the spread or the difference between the price of the product and what we acquire it for may be enough for us to actually overcome that loss in the quantity of items sold. Uh, And if we can capture more value by the sale of a smaller number of products, that actually is beneficial for us because of the fact that we no longer have as much of the kind of administrative support functions that go along with, you know, servicing more customers. So there's uh, less returns to deal with, there's less customer contact points to deal with, and that can actually be beneficial for us. Now, the other indication or the other possibility is where we have a very low inventory turnover ratio, and this is a little bit more obvious if one is low. Um, So there's a couple of things that you can think about if you see one that's lower than other companies, and I don't mean low by a couple of percentage or a couple of points. Uh, I'm talking kind of more significant movements. So if you have an inventory turnover ratio that's really low, um, one of the thing is, is you're looking at obsolete inventory. So we simply don't sell or are not selling things that are in demand. And as a result, our inventory is not moving a great deal. Uh, And that is a very huge problem, especially if we're a retailer where the revenue that we derive is primarily based on being able to sell products to to customers and then, of course, generate revenues and generate profitability in the long term. Uh, that's a very, very big issue. So we start to look at, well, why is the inventory not moving? What are the products that we're selling? Um, Are they obsolete? Uh, Of course, inventory, although it's an asset, it doesn't provide us with any value in its present form. It's all about converting it into sales revenue and ultimately cash, which the firm can use. Um, Inventory that's possessed in that form, we incur a cost of maintaining it. We insure it. There's a risk of it becoming stolen, becoming damaged, and then ultimately obsolete, particularly if it's a technology product. So you want to keep in mind those competing dynamics here. Of course, you don't want an inventory turnover ratio that is far too low, but you also want to manage it so your your inventory is not flying off the shelves and you're not uh, stocking fast enough to be able to accommodate customers who still want those particular products.